Okay, we just did a podcast on bow fishing A to Z basics, covering all the way through advanced, the whole deal. Now what I'm going to do with this video is I'm going to give a little uh, visual support to it so it all kind of makes sense and it all comes together. Uh, when it comes to starting off in bow fishing, you can get by very, very affordably. All you need is a simple reel. It can be something like this, which you just wrap the line on. When you shoot, pans out. As you pull it in, you just keep wrapping the line right around it. It's a very simple. Um, I use this for a lot of years, these kind of reels. Uh, they work like a champ. They don't fail. Uh, they work really good. But something like this, you're going to need an arrow. And you can usually get the reel and an arrow and a good fishing arrow for a kit for about 20 bucks. And uh, then you're going to need a set of polarized sunglasses, something where you can actually, where it cuts the glare down and you can see through the water. So just a simple pair of polarized sunglasses, um, even Walmart ones, it doesn't matter. Like I said, just something simple. But for like $30, you can actually get into this sport and, and have a lot of fun with it. Now, if you don't have a stabilizer hole on your bow, and you're going to have to mount that reel on there uh, and you're going to strap it on. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get one of these AMS uh, AMS reel adapters. Or I think even Great Northern makes a plastic one too called the traditional gadget adapter or something. But I use the AMS ones like this. Uh, they'll let you mount a retriever reel or they'll let you mount one of these kind of reels. But you basically take your, your reel here and in the back you take it, you mount that screw hole right through the center of that. And then once this is on there, you just take and you strap that right to your bow on the lower limb right below the riser and then you have a perfect reel and then you tie your fish arrow on there and you're all set and ready to go. So it does not cost a lot of money to get into bow fishing. Um, it's an incredibly fun sport. Now the arrows have to be a bow fishing arrow. They've got uh, special tips on them for holding the fish. Basically how it works, fish goes on and then it catches on these barbs and it doesn't come off usually. Um, and then to release them, what you got to do is you got to loosen the tip up a couple of turns and then these barbs will flip backwards like this and let that fish slide back off of it and then once you got the fish off you flip the barbs back down and you tighten the tip back up just like that you're ready to go fishing again another key feature that they have is they have this slide on here now what this is is you put your line through that slide and then your riser sits right here and as you draw that bow back that line stays out in front of your uh, hand it in front of your riser out there so it doesn't come back with you. Now when you shoot the arrow, this line that's on there, this will slide to the back. That arrow will keep feeding right on through there and then it'll hit on this back stopper that's on here. That, slot, that line slide will hit that and it's how it'll fly true with the line hanging off the back. So um, you, you got to have a designated fish arrow for it. Uh, so, you know, and then once you have that, the reel and the sunglasses, you are basically put it right on your bow and you're ready to go. Some other things that you can do too is uh, when you get a little more advanced or you want to get more advanced, you can go to a retriever type reel like what I have here on my wife's recurve. Uh, basically what it is, same principle, same kind of concept, but this uses the, the line is attached to the arrow here, same kind, of, same kind of fishing arrow. As you shoot it out, it pans out of that bottle just like that. The line just keeps feeding right out and it's free flowing. There's no resistance in there whatsoever. And then to reel it in, you just pull back on this little lever underneath here. You pull that, it puts tension on there, and then you crank that line in and it reels it right in and feeds the line into a bottle. So it works like a, a, a champ too. Um, it's pretty fast. It lets it out. Once it's out, you just crank them right in. Uh, it works really good. Now, it's not something that you're going to reel the fish in with usually. Um, you're going to have to, once you shoot and you hit a fish, you're going to set the bow down, grab the line, and pull it in by hand, just like you would if you were using this kind of a reel, but then it's quicker to crank this reel up. But trying to pull a 30-pound fish or even a 10-pound fish in with this, it, can, it gives you some battles and some fighting. And that's where spinning reels and other things come in. If you get into competitions and you're ready for that level, there's a whole nother, uh, you know, a whole nother world you can get into with spinning or spinning reels. I I like the retriever reels like that. I use one on my bow. Here's my longbow that I use. Same thing, me being left-handed, it's mounted on this side. But this is that same type of retriever reel. Uh, that system it works really good. The simple slides right on that arrow here, uh, so it feeds forward. Um, but just real simple. And again, mine as well as hers is held on with that traditional 
gadget adapter or that uh, AMS uh, whatever it is where you can strap that right on your bow you can get those everywhere they're 15 or 18 or 20 bucks or something I can't remember I have four or five and I haven't bought them in quite a few years but um, like I said simple retriever reel system uh, just pull the lever down and hit the crank and it reels it right in for you um, I'll get into detail about lights here in a little bit if you're seeing that on there but uh, and then as far as the glasses here too with the glasses what I do for mine just again something simple and cheap I got socks I took one of my socks I stuff it right in this one's actually wet because my bow fishing bag got soaked in there but uh, I just stuffed the, the glasses right inside of that sock and that protects them and I throw them in my bow fishing bag because you're going to want to have some kind of a bag or something that you're going to want to carry all of your bow fishing gear in spare parts extra glasses that kind of thing but set up a designated little bow fishing bag uh, for arrows I like to use a tube to carry all my arrows in. This is what I store them in when I'm actually at the house. It's just basically a drafter tube, a draftsman's tube that I got. I think I found it for like $13, but I carry all my arrows here in that. When I'm out in the field out there, whether I'm, I'm fishing from shore or fishing from a boat, I, I made a little thin, a, a two inch PVC uh, tube that I use that I stick all my arrows in here. I can fit four arrows inside of here and uh, just makes it really convenient to have a few extra arrows with you and it doesn't take up a lot of space. I just throw them right in that tube. That tube goes right in the boat with me. Um, so there's not a lot of stuff that you got to have for it to get involved. The, a couple key things that you got to remember and you got to keep in mind is that this slide on that arrow, that slide has got to stay forward of you. You have to have that out in front. Don't let that get be past your riser so that there's a chance of that getting this line getting hung up on any part of your bow. So you want to make sure that that stays out in front as you draw. When you have that on there, you want this to stay out in front of your riser, not past it. But really, that's the only thing. You just watch your line, you know, keep your line in tight so it's not gets doesn't get tangled up on you, and then you're ready to head out and shoot. Now, in that podcast, I covered in full detail what to look for, where to go when you're shooting, that kind of stuff. So I'm not going to get too involved in that. Again, that's something we can have described real well in the podcast. Um, there are a couple other things that I do want to cover here. If you want to do night fishing and you're going to do it from shore, you're not going to have a boat with lights on it, that kind of thing. There are some simple techniques that will make it really easy for you if you're wading, um, you know, hip boots, waders, or even just a pair of tennis shoes, which is how we mostly did it, was with just putting on an old pair of tennis shoes in shorts and wading out into the backwaters and the marshes and that kind of stuff. If you're going to go that route, you're going to want to have some kind of a headlamp with you, a headlamp comes in real handy. What's neat about this particular style headlamp here is this is a headlamp strap. It's made by Phoenix and it comes with this adapter, this gadget thing here where you can fit any kind of a flashlight and it just clamps and screws right in there. It actually does come with an over strap if you want to put it over your head as well too. But what's nice about this strap is it lets it sit off the side of your head as opposed to being dead center in the middle. I'll actually put it on here in a second and I'll show you like this here. But it lets you see see it hang on where you at in there but it lets me put it off the side of my head like this and the advantage to that is when I shoot I don't have to worry about my that headlamp being in the front when I shoot we usually have our head on a little angle that would put that light off to the side and not be seen where this light here will actually let it be off to that side of my head and I can adjust it so that when I shoot it's shining where I want it to hit so this is an excellent setup here for actually using when you're bow fishing so um, but you're gonna want some kind of a headlight or headlamp on there sorry if I was kind of out of frame there this is hard doing it all on your own um, but like I said this this system here this Phoenix head strap is 20 bucks you can put any light in there you want and it, it works like a champ you're gonna want something that's gonna be pretty bright to get into the water another thing I use when I'm bank shooting as well too is gonna be a bowl mounted light now this is actually my own little invention but I'm, I'm pretty proud of it what I did here is I took same kind of concept, but I just took a piece of aluminum, the same, just a little one inch piece of, or one and a half inch or something, aluminum I bought from Home Depot. I bent it on my vise, so it kind of made like an L shape. And then I drilled a hole in it, and I mounted it right to my bracket here that holds my, or that's part of my uh, retriever reel. And then I put a hose clamp, I cut a couple of Dremel, I used a Dremel and cut a couple notches in there so that I could actually get that hose clamp to fit through there. And I just stuck a light in a hose clamp and it works like a champ I can take that and I got it set right in position so that it shines right where I'm shooting my bow at and uh, 
it, it works awesome. I love it. So um, it's it's nice. You can walk to banks at night. You can use that. Even when I'm on a boat, I end up using that sometimes. I'm one of those people that even though I have a boat with all the lights and that kind of stuff, I can't get myself to actually run the docks. And a lot of people do, but on these lakes where there's houses and stuff, these guys, I see them, they'll come right into shore and they'll just zig and zag and work their way back and forth through the docks and around the docks and looking for the fish right on shore. And I got a problem with being out there in the middle of the night at three o'clock in the morning and buzzing by people's houses with a generator going and lighting up their houses with my halogen lights on there. I just can't get myself to do that. I don't want people yelling or, you know, I don't want to give this sport a bad name so I I refuse to run anywhere near the houses with any lights now when I'm out on some of those lakes that are more populated I'll, I'll run the weed beds and stuff that are out further out but I kind of make myself a rule that I won't get more than 300 yards closer in uh, from shore you know so that I don't bother people well what I can do it's nice with this light here that's mounted on that bow and then wearing this headlamp right here too if the weed beds are pulling me in closer to shore and I'm seeing fish I can actually turn my generator off I can shut the lights off on the boat and I can use just that headlamp and this light that's mounted on my bow this is an 800 lumen uh, two, uh, it takes two 123A batteries um, it's, uh, I'll go into those in the flashlight segment but I can't, cause I can't remember who makes it um, Eagle Tac makes it actually it's Eagle Tac but it's 800 lumens it's super super bright um, and uh, with this light on there and with that headlamp I can be in a boat and I can bow fish you know for quite a while and not have to run my light so if I'm coming in close and I'm running that trolling motor and I'm dead silent I'll shut I can run with these lights on there no lights on the boat and still shoot fish close into shore and still not bother anybody so it's kind of a nice way it gives you some options in there but bow fishing does not have to be expensive I killed millions and millions of fish with this simple retriever reel style here, um, or with this simple spinner, you know, this wrap around spin reel, what, I don't know what you, what it's just a drum, you know, but where you spin a line, but I killed millions of fish that way, and I've killed thousands of fish using a retriever style reel. Uh, there is no right or wrong, no easy, you know, it's, it's as little or as much money as you want to spend, but the beauty of it is, it's so much fun. Um, and there's a million things you can do with these fish that I explained in the podcast too. Uh, one thing you never want to do is leave fish out there. Now, if you're fishing from shore, and you're, or you're wading banks and stuff like that too, what you want to do is you want to get yourself some rope. Get yourself some good, thick, um, I don't have any here with me handy to show you, but you want some good like 3 16 or, uh, you know, nylon rope or poly rope, something like that. Keep a, about 10 feet of it with you and you can use it like a stringer. You can fit six or eight of these fish on there and then that way you have them and you can drag them along with you or you can tie them off and come back and get them, but never leave the fish sitting there. What we did when we used to fish down in the city areas and stuff where we had to park and then walk down some, you know, you had to follow like into the Clinton River. This was many years ago, but when we did it down there, what we used to do actually is we'd shoot these fish and we'd stack them up in like two consecutive piles or two piles as we were working our way along the river. And then what we did is in the back of the truck, we kept a wheelbarrow. We could bring the wheelbarrow back down when we were done, fill the fish in a wheelbarrow, bring them back, and then we'd throw them in the back of the truck into a, into a bin back there. Uh, it worked pretty good, but key, key point is never leave your fish out there, but give bow fishing a try if you haven't done it it's something it, it'll uh, improve your accuracy it gives you it keeps you shooting your bow in the summertime when you normally would probably be not doing it it, it throws in some alternatives to 3d shooting and stump shooting it's just plain fun and it's really good for the environment getting rid of these rough fish is important so uh, this is a little visual aid to kind of go along with the uh, the podcast on bow fishing and i hope it helps you out and uh I will be back with more soon. Thanks. Talk to you in a bit. Bye.